5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. When you talk about disease, be it infectious or non-infectious, there's usually a couple of words that come about quite often. And those are words we need to talk about. So for example, you know, what is the cause of disease? What that means, especially when it comes to infectious disease, is which pathogen caused the disease? For example, was it a virus? Was it a, was it a virus? Was it a bacteria? Was it a protozoa? Which pathogen caused disease? So cause means you know, what caused it? Transmission is how do we get it? So for example, when it comes to the flu, we might have inhaled that, so how do we get it? We might have inhaled that because someone else had it and then we got their snot in our nose or in our mouth somehow. That's disgusting, but um, it's a weird example. But yeah, transmission is just how it goes from person to person. Then the host response, that means what does our body do? So what does our body do to defend itself? In mo most cases, there would be white blood cells which would try to kill it. There would be you know, some other chemicals that our body releases, antibodies and all that kind of stuff. So host response means what does our body do to try to defend against that, that um, disease or that pathogen. Now, symptoms refers to what can we see? What happens when we actually have disease? You know, for example, do we have fever? Do our arms fall off? What are the symptoms of the actual disease that we're talking about? So some could be fever, could be coughing and other diseases it might even be that your arms fall off. So symptoms which refers to you know, what happens when you have disease. Then we've got treatment. So treatment means if you have the disease, what do we do to remove the disease, to try to remove the disease? For example, will you take medication or anything else to try to remove the disease? So prevention is how do we make sure we don't have disease in the first place? So we don't want disease, so don't have the disease. So how do we make sure people just don't get the disease in the first place? That's prevention. What mechanisms do we have in place for that? Now control means what happens if someone has the disease and we want to make sure it doesn't spread. So no spread or less chance of it spreading. So we want to control the spread of the disease once people have it. So these are the words we, you need to know because the dot point itself says students will identify data, gather sources, and analyze information from secondary sources to describe one named infectious disease in terms of its cause, transmission, host response, major symptoms, treatment, prevention, and control. So all of the words I covered here. Uh, we're going to cover one example, but you might cover a different example. Which one you choose doesn't matter, but you have to answer all of these different points for whichever one you chose. And the one we're going to cover is the influenza virus, or other word is the flu. So for the flu, what causes the flu? Well, it's the influenza virus. So we've got the influenza, influenza virus, which is our cause. And as you can see, that is one of those crazy looking ones. It's a virus, so it has a, some DNA inside of it, or RNA, depending on what kind of virus it is. It will have these receptors on it, and it will invade our body somehow and infect our cells and tell it to replicate. That's the cause. It's the influenza virus. How is it transmitted? Well, if, for example, one person has it, and let's say they sneeze, or they cough, or, or anything else, there's going to be a small, tiny... So moisture particles in the air, and in those tiny moisture particles, I'm going to draw a tiny yellow dot inside the moisture particles, and those are enough. Again, they're going to be very small, you're not going to see them, but they're going to get into our body somehow, especially into our respiratory. This is our lungs here. This is our trachea here. So you can see here, this is when they, they came in through the air in most cases, and then they would deposit, so they would deposit on the actual trachea, or inside the lungs. And that's where they actually do their business. So they invade our respiratory tract, which is this part here. The whole lungs and everything else is a respiratory tract. And that's how we've got transmission happening from the influenza two ways. Either it's direct contact, direct contact, which would be the example I just showed, or it would be indirect contact. So direct contact 
is if one person sneezes, for example, or coughs, and the bacteria flies in the air, or the virus in this case flies in the air, and gets into our cells, into our, sorry, into our respiratory tract, and it got directly into it from one person to the next. The indirect would be, for example, if someone uh, wiped their, their nose that was infected with their hands, and then let's say they touched a rail, right? So there's a railing here somewhere. And the infected person had some snot on there and touched that snot, put that snot onto the railing. And then the other person, the unaffected person, touched that same railing and basically had this, the virus on his hand. And then maybe he had some food and that's how it got into the actual mechanism. So once he was eating the food, he mixed the virus with the food and then ate the whole thing together. And that's how it got into That's indirect contact. So by having it, it maybe using the, the ledge or whatever else it is to get it into your body, direct contact is if one person sneezes, for example, and then it goes into the person's respiratory tract through the air itself. That's direct contact. That was our transmission. That's how our influenza virus gets transmitted. Now, host response is if we have our virus, they will be our white blood cells. So these are our white blood cells. And they will usually target them and they will try to kill them. So as one way, we have our white blood cells that will try to destroy invading viruses. And also we just have something called the immune response, which means we have we get fever and everything else and all of that's there to try to kill the actual virus. So these two ways would be one of the host responses to try to destroy the virus, white blood cells attack the virus, and our immune system, immune response happens, which means we get a fever and everything else, and it's all there to kill the actual virus. Now, major symptoms, well, well what are the major symptoms of, of the flu? You might have had the flu, so you probably know a couple. It might be coughing, in many cases it is coughing. It could be sneezing, it could be the runny nose, runny nose. These are probably still the harmless ones, but then we've got the fever, we've got the headache, just to name a couple, right? So these will be our symptoms of the flu. What will be the treatment? Do not use antibiotics. We're going to cover why in the next video. Do not use antibiotics to treat the flu. Antibiotics do not work against viruses, so do not use antibiotics. The main sort of advice would be to get as much rest as you can. So rest would be one treatment. Then make sure your body can actually fight the disease. Another would be just to drink as, as much water as possible. So be well hydrated. And you can take, for example, aspirin. Aspirin doesn't help fight the virus. What it does is it will just make the symptoms be slightly less painful. So it will lower the symptoms. Which means you still have a fever, but you don't feel as bad anymore. Your headache might be a bit less. It doesn't, the aspirin itself, so this is aspirin, does not help fight the actual infection. And we do not use antibiotics, we don't use medication for the flu, it doesn't work. All right, so these were three examples of what we can do to treat the actual influenza virus infection. Now, how, what do we do to prevent it? Well, this is supposed to be, it's supposed to be an injection, so we can use a vaccine. Now, one problem when it comes to the flu virus, some viruses and some bacteria they don't really mutate much, they don't change much. So once we have a vaccine against that, whatever it is, it'll stay for the rest of the life. We have the vaccine for the rest of our life. But the problem is with flu viruses, they have high mutation rates, which means they change really quickly. So if we have the vaccine against last year's flu, the new year flu will be a different flu. So we have to get vaccines every year. And even then, we're not protected, completely protected. Right? So vaccine flus every year, just to have some protection, but then still we won't be completely prevented. We won't be able to completely prevent it because they have a very high mutation rate, which is why flu is so much, so many people are affected by the flu because our immune system can't really handle it that well. And also wearing masks would be another example. If you remember in when the bird flu came out, all the people were wearing the masks because that obviously, if it gets through the air, through the direct transmission, that means they can get stuck on the mask and they won't be inhaled into your system. So these would be two ways of preventing it. And controlling it, well, here we have a poor person. This person in pink is infected and obviously he is sort of isolated. You have all the blue people around him who stay away from him. So they are here, they don't go inside. 
and that's one way you can we can control it. If someone's infected, just make sure that stay away f as far as possible from other people, thereby not infecting other people. So it's isolation and quarantine. So isolation and quarantine people. And this would be what, an example of control. So I'll go over all the different ways again. The cause of the influenza disease or infection is the influenza virus. The transmission is either direct through direct contact, which means it goes through the air and it goes into our respiratory system, which is our um, lungs and our trachea, or indirect contact. If, for example, someone has their infection in their nose and rubs their nose and then puts it on a ledge, and then the other person touches that ledge and gets it in their mouth somehow, that's indirect contact. Those are two ways we can transmit the influenza virus. The host response, the white blood cells will try to kill the actual virus, and our body will start the immune response, which means we get a fever in an attempt to actually fight the, the, the disease. Symptoms, we've got coughing, runny nose, sneezing, fever, headache, also sore throat, which makes sense because they will often infect our actual respiratory area, which is our throat area, which is why we have a sore throat. You can see it right there. We have, for treatment, we do not use antibiotics. They won't work against viruses. Instead, we need to get as much rest as possible. We need to stay as hydrated as possible. And we can take aspirin just to lower the symptoms, not to fight the, the virus. Prevention, that would include vaccines. We would have to get those every year because they mutate at a very high rate, which means they're different every year, the actual viruses. And we can wear masks if it gets really bad, and, and those masks help make sure that they don't get into our respiratory tract. How do we control the disease? So how do we make sure that once people have it, that it doesn't spread? We put them into isolation and quarantine, which means they can't infect other people. But yeah, that would be more or less it, but hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.